From Universal Studios in Hollywood, California, it's home and family. Do, 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 do. Okay, it is Home and Family, and it is Tuesday, and we have some really strange conversations around here at time, but we, we'd love to have include you on those. Welcome back, Mark. It's nice I'm back. I'm home. I'm home. I would like to inform all of you, you cannot look Mark in the eye any longer. You will have to yes. speak to his assistant. He's very famous now. He's a big, famous Hallmark right. star. Mm -hmm. wow. So he will speak through me, and I will introduce all of you after he's told me to. Yes. Tell them I'm, all, I'm happy that they're all here today. Mark is very happy that you have all joined us today on mm. Home and Family. Would you let them know that I'm kind of a big deal? Mark is kind of a big deal. He wants me to tell you that. I'm Perfect. not saying that myself. No, <laughs> Our next guest and her husband had it all. The luxury cars, the home, the family. But she was also drowning in debt. Welcome the author of The Recovering Spender, Lauren Grootman. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, thank you, thank you. So excited to be here. Thank you for being here and sharing your story. Yeah. How bad did it actually get for you? Um, so it got really bad. We were over $40,000 in debt. We almost lost our house. We had a car towed away down the road while all of our friends watched it get towed away. And so we're kind of just like a lot of other Americans out there. So today I'm going to teach you what I did to get out and how I've been teaching millions how to do the same. Well, it's really I know a lot of people connect and relate. Yeah. Coming up next, the recovering spender herself, Lauren Grootman. Don't go away. I was once in $40,000 of the debt. So up next, I'm going to teach you exactly how to do what I did so that you don't have to do the same. Well, our next guest could teach us a few things. Um, her, she and her husband were living the American dream, as we all would love to. They had it all, the custom home, the luxury cars, beautiful children, just everything that money could buy. But they were unknowingly drowning in debt. Mm. Welcome to the author of The Recovering Sp Spender, Laura Gr Grootman. Thank Welcome. You. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you. So can we, uh, uh, how, how, let's talk about the debt situation first. Yeah. How much debt were you in? How so bad? not only were we behind in our mortgage payments, but we were $42,000 in debt. Oh my God. $42,000. We were behind on our mortgage. We were behind on our car payments. But on the outside, you would have absolutely no idea. We had a Cadillac. We had an Audi. We had this custom gorgeous house that we had built for us, but we were drowning in yeah. debt and, and it was just horrible, horrible. Were you aware at the time that you were drowning in debt and you were just putting up this facade? Yeah, yeah, so that's why the name of my book is called The Recovering Spender because I am a spender. I love to spend money all the time on anything. No matter whose money it is. No matter whose money it is, I'll spend it. And so for, for me, it was me, it was all my fault. I was spending money without my husband knowing about it. And I kind of hid a lot of the things from him. So he wasn't even really aware, but I fully was aware of what was going on. Sure. Well, when did that big moment happen for you? When were you like, this is it, I've hit right. rock bottom. The house bottom. of cards yeah. starts yeah. to collapse. Right, so, well, first of all, I was so sick and tired of being stressed out about money all the time. And yeah. one time, but that, that stress would lead me to spend even more money. So it was like a cycle. So I would get depressed and then I would go shopping. And one day I went and spent $600 on our credit card because you know, I, it wasn't my money. I was just spending random yeah, credit plastic. card money. Yeah, it's plastic. Sure. And so I went out, I went shopping. I hid it in my car until my husband went to work the next day. And then I brought it upstairs. I took all the tags off, put them in the closet so that nobody would know. Right. Uh. And the guilt and the shame of that just mm. caught up with me. And so the next day, I actually took all of our credit card statements and I took them out and I laid them across our bed. And after we put our kids to bed, I said, hey, Mark, I, I've got to talk to you about something. He came up and I said, uh, we're in $42,000 for the debt, like as fast as I could, like soon, because it didn't sink into me. Sure. And um, he's such a gracious man. This is what he said to me. He said, um, I forgive you. Let's get out of this together. Wow. Two years later, we were debt free. Wow. And um, you married the right man. I did. Yeah, you did. I did. I did. Normally, I did. that would take a huge strain and toll on someone's relationship. Yeah. I mean, obviously, it speaks volumes to the, your, the way you guys communicate. Right. But clearly, you did find a way to want. I had to deal with this and keep it away from him. Right. Exactly. It was really hard on our marriage, on our relationship. We fought a lot about money. We didn't talk about money. We didn't budget or anything like that. So yeah. I'll tell you kind of the, how we are as a couple. So my husband is a spreadsheet nerd. Like okay. he loves numbers. Yeah. There he is. Good. So he yep. loves numbers. He loves spreadsheets. They make me break out in a cold sweat. Right. Like I can't handle. He shows me and I'm like, just I'm going to pass out. And so for me, 
when we were talking about it, he would always talk about money and and in a different way than I did. So yeah. it just got really hard. So we were fighting. Our values were starting to suffer. Oh, gosh. Our you know relationships sure. with each other. It just got really really hard. Yeah, that's not uncommon with no. in partnerships and relationships where one person's much better with the money than the other person. That's why that person's usually in charge well, of doing the finance. Well, attract. Yep. Exactly. Yeah. yeah. I don't know how I got stuck in charge of the money though. <laughs> I'm not that's what I'm saying. About it. I mean, yeah. You were doing your your spending was out of control. Correct. Were there any warning signs leading up to this? Were you always a spender? as a kid? Yeah, actually, um, there were a lot of warning signs. Looking back, um, I would get anxiety going into stores when I didn't buy anything. So, like, I never window shopped. Like, I don't even know what that is. Like, going in and really? buying, not buying something, that's just crazy to me. Um, anxiety of just feeling about it. Um, spending money knowing that I don't have it, but not caring just because I want what I want and it helped fulfill a need and a desire that I wanted. Sure. And so there were a lot of warning signs that I wish I had of like, hello, you know, I should uh, probably uh, stop doing so that. So 42,000 in debt? 42,000 And you were debt. out of it in, in two, two years. years? Okay. Two okay. years. You know what's next. Yes. How? Okay. So the biggest thing that we had to do was we decided to sell that custom house. So our 3,200 square foot house, out of your house that, we your built, dream house. that we built our dream house and we sold it. Because why? If we hadn't, we would have been years and years further down the road. Yes. So this is what we did. We sold our house. We sold almost everything that we had, you know, on eBay or Craigslist or wherever. We moved into an 800 square foot townhouse that like you couldn't even get. I, like if we were eating dinner and I had to get something out of the fridge, everybody had to get up from the table, move. I'd have to move the table so I could open the fridge to wow. get the ketchup or whatever. Wow. And so we sold our house. That was like a huge thing for us. Yeah. That's a huge we thing. learned how to cut. Um, I had to go out and get a job at night. So to, two to make ends meet. Yeah. Well, no, I was at home with the kids during the day. My husband worked during the day. I worked at night. We were like ships passing in the night, but we just needed to do it in order to get through. So we had to sacrifice for a year of me being home to be mm -hmm. able to do this. And then another thing is we got really real with our money. We learned how to budget, which to me, like spenders or people that are in debt, that's like a swear word to us, like yeah. budgeting is just not something we enjoy doing. I had to learn how to like budgeting. And I also, one of the big things we did was learn how to cut our food bill. We've cut it from $1,000 a month down to $200 a month. Really? And I learned how to meal plan and freezer cook. Coupons. And coupon and anything I could do. We were just like so focused and we are not living this way anymore. And and so that's, those are the things that we did. Did you stop eating out and things yeah, like that? Yeah, we stopped eating out. We, I stopped getting my hair done, you know, I stopped um, getting my nails done. I stopped shopping. So you were I really, stopped... you were living sort of the high life. You were really yep. living, so those who were living on a budget already trying to get out, it's even more difficult. Yeah. Was there, did you address the emotional component to this because of the reason why you were spending? Yeah. yeah. Is there a void or something that you were trying to fill? Well, Was I it... think that I really didn't have, had never sat down to think about the things that I really valued in life. So I value my faith. I value my family. I value my friendships. I value security, retirement, college exactly. savings. Exactly. But yet all of my spending was on things that were not a value to me. Mm -hmm. And so I really had to kind of get really real with, okay, you know, these are my kids. I've That's what's kids. a value right there. This oh. is oh what's gosh, important. I know. Them. This is what's important to me now. Yeah. And so when I'm spending my money, whether I have to sell my house, yeah. this is what's this is what matters. You know, yeah. one you quick know? piece of advice. We gotta go to break, but one quick piece of advice. There are people out there, mm -hmm. you know, Lauren, that have that are going through the same thing. Maybe right. they don't even know they're going through the same thing. I would encourage them to sit down and look at their finances. What's one piece of advice you'd give them to set them on the right path. Yeah, that make a spending a reflection of your value system, and then you're going to have a lot easier time sticking to that budget. Wow, Thank fantastic. You, More information, you can visit Lauren on her website, laurengrootman.com. By the way, we are giving away 10 copies of her book. Yeah. You should be selling them. Yes, yes, yes sell them. I, I, okay. I sell them. But there are 10 <laughs> copies that she's given us to give away on our Facebook page. You can get all the details there. <laughs> Up next, Ken Wingard. And Lauren, I just want to say this. You should feel good about the time you spent with us. Oh, there we go again. <laughs> Michelle Rodriguez is going to be here from the new movie, Milton's Secret. I mean that in a good way. We enjoyed <laughs> spending true. time with you. Yes, enjoy Bird, come makes back sense. and yeah. hang out. Michael, Thanks. great job, sir. <laughs> Booyah. Booyah. <laughs> Booyah. 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 Booyah.